Hello students and welcome back for the second video in this unit called Problems with Monarchy. And in this video we're going to talk about how the king of England ended up getting in trouble and how the people got some rights back. So how you see right down here, how the people took the power back. Where we last left off, we learned about how the ancient uh, Romans and Greeks had democracies that had some pros and cons and they eventually fell apart. Kings took back over and they ruled for quite a while, a thousand or so years for the most part. Most countries had kings. And now um, we're going to start to look at how we went back from kings back to some more uh, democratic style governments. So let's begin with the divine right of kings. Back in the day, back in um, the Middle Ages, they call it, say, a thousand through about 16, 1700 AD, kings and queens believed they ruled because God's thought they should rule. So they had power from God to rule. Um, most importantly, not just the king believed this, but everyone believed this, that the king was chosen to rule by God. So you wouldn't mess around too much with the king, because if you mess around with the king, you were actually messing around with God. And you don't mess with that usually. So this belief in divine right kept kings and queens in power and kept them from um, getting, uh, the people getting mad at them, basically. So you see here, here's a cartoon of a couple of kings. They say, once you get past the divider of the kings, I'm not much into theology. Just kind of a joke that they like religion because it keeps them in power. And then another cartoon over here. I'll let you in a little secret, son. If you're really, really careful, absolute power only corrupts a little bit. So, haha. -ha. A couple of cartoons. Okay, so another way kings kept control other than just the divine right is that they had this system called the feudal system. And it was a class system that would keep some people in control of the others. And this is kind of the way it worked. Royalty would keep control by allowing some people, called the lords, to have all the power and wealth. Then the lords would be loyal to the king because they were treated well. Then most people, the peasants, had nothing at all. So the, you see that it kind of looks like this. The king was at top. They gave a little bit of power to the lords, um, who in return gave the military aid. The lords would give a little bit of power to the knights, who in turn would help them, and then the peasants or serfs were at the bottom. And this system gave the king enough friends to keep control. These people here, the lords and the knights, would help the king because they were sort of like the favorites. But for most people, they had no rights or power at all. Here's a little close-up of our diagram. So you see king at the top lords, knights, peasants, and it was all kind of like a trickle-down system, so the king stayed in power, and the peasants were the ones that did all the hard work and got nothing for it. Okay, so let's get back to our, our problem here. These, we said problems with monarchy. Well, here's the problem. In 1215, King John, he was the king of England, but he wasn't doing a very good job. He decided to go against the system that was in, in place. He took away some of that power from the lords and from the nobles because he didn't care about them, and thought that they would follow him anyway. That was a big mistake. These nobles rebelled against King John, and then when he had no friends or no army to back him up, he was easily defeated. The nobles, the people that were under King John, forced him to sign something called the Magna Carta, or Great Charter, that put writing into writing restrictions on his power. This was the first time anyone ever actually took power away from the king and back towards uh, monarchy-style government. Okay, so here's what the Magna Carta did. It forced the king to give up some power. It showed that the king was bound by laws and couldn't just do whatever he or she wanted. It allowed a group of nobles to reverse a king's decision with a majority vote, so it was kind of like, almost like a democracy. It didn't have a big impact immediately. Um, only the lords were ensured rights, but it was kind of like a stepping stone towards more democracy as time went on. And a couple more cartoons here, joking about how the king signed it, not knowing what he was signing, even though that's not exactly true. And then how he was pen isn't working because he was trying to stop signing the Magna Carta. So in the end, um, this is kind of the way it worked. Back a long time ago, kings were in control for two reasons. One, because people believed in divine right. And two, because there was a class system that existed to keep the king and the nobles at the top and the peasants at the bottom. However, when the King John took away that power from the nobles. They rebelled, and they forced him to sign the Magna Carta, which was the first time the king lost some of his power. And after the Magna Carta, over time, kings and queens of England slowly lost more and more power, and today they have very little. And the American Revolution, which we'll talk about later, was another step. When Magna Carta was the first, the American Revolution may have been the second or third step towards taking away power from the king. 